This is Friday Evening's Undercard. On our wrestling show today, OVW star Justin Smooth comes on the show to talk about his upcoming match with Tony Gunn, his match against Brian Cage at the Clash in the Bluegrass, and much more. Welcome, everyone, to Friday Evenings on the Card. I'm Gentleman John, and I'm bringing you another fine interview today. But first, if you want to follow us on social media, we can be found on Instagram at Friday Evenings on the Card, on Twitter at F Undercard, on Facebook by going to facebook.com slash Friday Evenings on the Card, or you can reach us via email at Friday Evenings on the Card at gmail.com. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and give us that five star review on iTunes. It'd mean a lot to us. Now, our guest today has been wrestling for four years. He's a former Ohio Valley Wrestling Television Champion and a former Ohio Valley Wrestling Southern Tag Team Champion. This coming Saturday, he has a match against Tony Gunn for the OVW Heavyweight Championship. You can find him on Instagram at Justin underscore smooth and on Twitter at Trinidad Titan. He is Ohio Valley Wrestling star Justin Smooth. Welcome to the show, Justin Smooth from Ohio Valley Wrestling. What's up, man? How are you? I'm doing How are you well, doing man. today, man? Yeah, man, I'm doing well. Awesome, How you doing? awesome. I am, I am great. I got no complaints, man. Thanks for uh, having me on your show. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping to make it a good one. Yeah, man, I'm hoping so, too. And uh, thank you for coming on this evening. I know you had your big uh, tape review this evening. You guys do your tape reviews on Thursdays. Yeah. Yes, we sure do. Every Thursday night, we have a, a, a television review of our product. See what needs to be uh, see what needs to be done to improve the overall presentation of our product, and see what needs to be uh, you know just trying to brush up and have a a good product for the fans and the people that watch every single week. Our loyal fans. Yeah, and trying to you know get better as far as you as as a wrestler, trying to get better every week. I mean, I know that's a big part of it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Performers. Performers, my friend. Yes, indeed. And that's actually going to come up. That's going to come up later. We just had some big news come out from OVW. I think it may have been yesterday, but it might have been the day before. But, hey, we'll get back to that in just a minute. Yeah, that's right. So, hey, talk to us a little bit about the big match you got coming up this weekend with Tony Gunn. Well, uh, this weekend, April... April Saturday night special, April 6th. Uh, I have a chance to uh, go one-on-one with Tony Gunn for the OVW Heavyweight Championship. Uh, I'm pretty excited, pretty ready for this opportunity. Um, I intend to take that championship from him because I, I personally believe that he has no right walking around with that belt. You know, that's my personal opinion. And uh, I'm going to do everything I can and everything I need to do to actually uh, – beat a victor in that match so yeah it's gonna be uh it's gonna be an exciting night it's, and we also have a cage match a cage match is gonna finish off the night between colton cage and dustin jackson that's gonna be uh that's gonna be a must see actually yeah those guys have been really going at it for gosh it's got to be about two months now right yeah they have some real bad blood and it, it, it's reached some it's reached some ultimate heights man it reached some ultimate heights. I'm looking forward to see what happens. Yeah, yeah. As am I. I'll um, I'll have to see if I can find a way to watch it, because uh, you know I, I don't live in Louisville, and so I you know I can't come to the show. Um, gotcha. So what's the um, you know what what's sort of the background with you and you and Tony as far as you uh, challenging him for the for the championship? Well, uh, pretty much. Tony Gunn, he won a royal. Uh, he, won, he won a battle royal at one of our events. Uh, he was awarded a, a number one contendership for the belt. He fought Abyss for the belt, and uh, 
he beat Abyss for the championship belt. Um, my only gripe was that uh, I was screwed out of my title shot at the thousandth episode, and I I never received my title shot rematch. And uh, I uh, I challenged him for it. He accepted my challenge, and I'm gonna prove to him that that belt belongs to me, and uh, just a matter of time. And pretty much uh, that's the only background between me and Tony Gunn. You know, I I just believe that he's he I believe that. And he is not a, a, a heavyweight championship, a, a heavyweight championship caliber type of uh, performer, and I'm going to prove that to him. All right, all right, and uh, definitely looking forward to that. That's going to be a big, big event this coming Saturday there at the Davis Arena. Yeah, it's going to be a big event. And obviously, if you win. That will not be your first championship in OVW. You have held some other championships in OVW, as I have written down here. Yeah, that, that's right. I was the OVW television champion, and I was a tag champion also. So uh, whenever I do become the OVW heavyweight champion, I'll be a triple crown. And that's going to be uh, that's going to look very, very good on my resume. And obviously that's... Look forward um, to it. Yeah, obviously being a Triple Crown champion, that's something that a lot of other people's done. I know Cody Rhodes did it. I know CM Punk did it among some other yeah. uh, contenders that have done that. That is correct. That is absolutely correct. And now you talk about being the TV champion. I can't remember this for sure because I, I honestly get it mixed up a little bit because they've, they've changed hands like so quickly recently here. But you were the... TV champion going into the clash in the bluegrass, weren't you? Um, but, uh, no, I was not actually. I was not the TV champion at that time. I, I believe I had lost it either a week or two prior to that event. Oh, you know what? That's right. Now that you, now that you say that, I remember you actually lost it on a disqualification because, um, my correction, that's right. I disqualified myself because I had kicked my opponent square in the nuts, and that's a that's a cause right there for a disqualification. So I beat myself out of the television championship. Nobody else beat me for it. So I mean, I want to clarify that right there. Yeah, I, and I, I remember that. You, you kicked him, and then I think it was the next week you and him had – a match and uh you kind of got some revenge on him yeah i did get some revenge on him i don't even remember his name actually you know i remember as i watched that match so there was this one there was this one weird spot in it where i don't remember if you were on the second rope or on the top rope but you fell forward and basically head butted him right in the groin yeah and the look that was um the look on the referee's face was so classic when you did that. She was just like, huh, okay, well, I guess that's cool. He didn't mean to do it. Yeah. Good old Charlene. I love Charlene. Shout out to Charlene McKenzie. <laughs> she's awesome, man. Yeah, she's, oh, man. for me, she's definitely the most recognizable referee that you guys have for uh, OVW. Yeah, she's she's one of the best referees we actually have right now. She's uh she's an awesome lady. I, I dig her. She's good. And so hey, you know, I brought up that clash in the bluegrass, and then we got to reminisce about some other matches there. But uh, you had a pretty big match there. Yeah, it was a, it was a good uh good competition between me and Brian Cage. Uh, you know, obviously he was able to pull off the win. You know, that doesn't discredit my. You know, my talents and my ability, he was just a better man at that moment. Um, he's a good competitor, all respects to him. I believe that, you know, with this partnership at Impact Wrestling, I believe me and him would uh, have an opportunity to see eye to eye and go against each other again. And uh, I believe there will probably be a different outcome in the future with that. Yeah, I think there might be. He's he, he's a good guy, but, you know, you're you definitely got a lot of talent yourself. Yeah, I I don't feel uh you know discouraged from that loss. Absolutely not, you know. And I I, I know I got what it takes to uh get a win over him. You know, it's just a matter of time. I don't sweat it. So, just a question about Brian Cage. 
is his shoulders as wide as they look on the television set? Is he as big <laughs> as he looks on TV? <laughs> yeah, he's a very muscular man. He's a very muscular man. You don't really see too many muscular men walking around OVW these days. So, you know, he's a, he's a change for um, what I'm used to fighting. But change for the better, you know what I mean? He's a, he's a very uh, he's a very strong guy, which is good. Which is very good. Because I don't like beating up small men anyway. So, for those out there who don't know, how big are you? Because you, you, you look uh, pretty massive on the TV. Uh, I appreciate that, man. I'm uh, about 6'2", 6'2", about 240, 240, you know, hanging around there most of the time. Around the holidays, probably about 245. But I say around a good 240. Okay, and I, I saw you on the Louisville TV. You said you got, what, a size 14 boot that you're, you're laying size, into people? Well, Size 14 boot, man. Every single week, Wednesday night, a boot to the face is a, is a guaranteed forecast prediction. And I've been laying out that boot for quite a while now, man. It, it, it's put down, you know, Tommy Dreamer, Billy Gunn. I put a bit on his fat back a couple of times also. It laid out uh, some of the best that our uh, sport has to um, offer. And I will continue continue to dish out that boot whenever necessary to get what I need in this sport, man. And you're probably looking forward to having an opportunity to do that this coming weekend? Yeah, it, it's going to happen. It's going to happen, trust me. As a matter of fact, I'm. I, thanks for reminding me, I probably need to polish it up a little bit to make sure it's a little shiny and crisp. But uh, yeah, definitely, a boot, boot love is going to be dished out this weekend. <laughs> All right, man. And, um, I think the last time I talked to you on the phone briefly, now you said you broke into the business and it was 2015 and you uh, came in in Pennsylvania with the Wild Samoans. Is that right? Yeah, it was, yeah, 2015. Uh, I started training with uh, the great Samu out in Pennsylvania, the Wild Samoans. That was a nice place, a nice place to, you know, learn a lot of basics and stuff. Um, he has a rigorous uh, training regime down there for his students but ultimately, I wanted to come out to OVW for, you know, uh, obvious reasons for, you know, several reasons that OVW offers uh, uh, a future talent, you know, exposure, uh, training and, you know, different opportunities and stuff like that. So 2016, you know, I made my way over to OVW and I've been there, been here ever since. But yeah, I did start out with uh, the Wall Samoans down in um, Pennsylvania. It was a good time, good times. And when you came to OVW, did you start out in the beginner's class or because you had already done wrestling beforehand, you kind of went into the intermediate or the advanced class? Uh, when I came over to OVW, uh, I did the beginners again. I did the beginners and then I went on to the Rip Rogers class. And uh, Al Snow has his own class uh intimately for the OVW talent. It's not open to the public, but it's only for OVW talent. And, uh, you know, he uh, he helps uh, us out on a weekly basis as well. All right, that's good stuff. And how has the promotion changed since Al bought it? As I recall, that was back in about April of last year that he bought it. Yeah, he bought it. Uh, yeah, that is correct. Uh, I believe it's been a year. Um, well, as you can see, man, things have... Uh, Things have taken off, you know, slowly but surely. We had our thousandth episode on our fourth street, which we had about a good, I believe it was close to eight to a thousand, eight to a thousand people there in attendance. Um, you know, we've been broadcasting live events on, on, on the live television. We had, um, you know, we had the opportunity with Impact Wrestling. We signed a partnership with them for being a developmental uh, territory for Impact Wrestling. Um, and, you know, this Saturday, actually, this Saturday, April 6th, we're going to be, uh, Al, Al and some of the OVW officials um, are going to be an going to be announcing something very big with OVW coming up. And um, there's supposed to be a, a, um, a trade school, a trade school, uh, Things started with OVW where somebody can uh, actually obtain a degree in professional wrestling. 
as well as different things with production and um, different behind the scenes stuff with, you know, production, editing, um, you know, marketing, stuff like that, where, you know, a talent can um, be more diverse in the, in the industry of uh, sports entertainment. So OVW has made a almost 360 change within the last year. And it's only been getting better, you know. It's only been getting better. We've been we've grown a lot since last year, and we're we're continuing to grow every single week, every single week. Yeah. So how how did you react when you first heard about the uh, the impact deal? Not not the the one night only show, but when they actually said, "Hey, we're you guys are going to be the new developmental." It was good, actually. Uh, I felt good. I mean, I believe it's a great opportunity for uh, the talent that we have now. A great opportunity for them to be able to, um, you know, get some exposure on Impact TV, you know, and it, it's a good opportunity for OVW and Impact to work together to uh, expand both brands. Um, and it's only just going to bring, you know, it's only going to be, it's only going to be better for, for the overall sport. Because OVW does have a lot to offer and to give, and we have a lot of talent, a lot of talent that a lot of people don't know about, you know. So with that partnership, I believe it, it's just a, a good, <clears throat> it's a good um, avenue to expose some of the good talent that we do have, such as myself. Yeah, and to kind of go back to the one night only again, what was it like wrestling in front of that many people, as opposed to? You know, normally you guys get about 100 or 150, but for that one, I think it was like 400 or 500 people. It was good. Um, it was jam-packed. You know, it was standing room only, which is all, which is always a good sign for any promoter putting on a wrestling event. It was, it was very, it was, it was, it was a good experience, humbling experience. You know, at the thousandth episode, we did have about you know a good 800, maybe a thousand people there. So that was our largest audience for uh, a professional wrestling show. But uh, it was definitely it was definitely a good atmosphere. You know, the, you know, it was definitely good. And <clears throat> the crowd was hot. The crowd was really hot. You can't forget those moments, my man. Yeah, man, that's it's always great when the crowd gets into it, you know, a good hot yeah. crowd really makes a show. You know what I mean? Absolutely. They were they were hot before the show started, and the show ended on a high note. So they went home, got their money's worth, and you know those them same fans continue to tune in every single week to see what OVW has in store for them. You know, and 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 and, and that's what we're about. You know, making the fans come back, making the fans tune back in to see what's next. Because we do have some, we do have diverse storylines, and we do have some interesting, interesting feuds going on at this point in time, and they just continue to evolve every single week. Yeah, they definitely do. You know, I actually, I had honestly kind of forgotten about OVW uh, before Al took over, and then you know I saw all the news reports that he was taking over, and I'm like, wow. Well, let me let me take a look back at this. Uh, you know, back at OVW, and um, I've pretty much been watching ever since then. So, you know, right at about a year now that I've been watching. And as I remember, like right after I started watching was when you came back from sort of a layoff. So what uh, what happened in there that you had to have that have a layoff? Um. That is right. Yeah, I did took a layoff. Uh, I had some uh, some personal family issues, and I uh, took several months off. Uh, I did come back at the Run for the Ropes last year, April. Um, speaking of Run for the Ropes, we have uh, April twenty sixth is our Run for the Ropes event. But uh, yeah, last year I returned. Last year April, I returned from uh, a couple of months off some uh, family issues uh, that was I was dealing with. Um, and yeah, OBW, um, after OBW has been off the radar for several years, but since Al has taken it over, he has brought it back up to the limelight, you know, and, and in addition to him bringing it back out to the limelight, in a sense, 
you know, our talent, our talent and our roster has captivated the audience attention. So we continue to, you know, draw more audience. Um, we continue to draw more audience to our product every single week. So everything's working out hand to hand. You know, Al's bringing, bringing us to new heights and we're just, we're continuing to deliver a good product to the audience and the consumer who's uh, who's buying tickets every single week and every single month to come see, you know, great, great action, great sports action. Okay. And speaking of Al making a lot of improvements, he just recently announced the OVW network where it's the, um, you know, subscription service where you can go on there and watch all the back episodes of OVW television. So um, what's that sort of, you know, done for, for you as far as what you uh, see and that sort of thing. Yeah, that was right. Um, I believe about two weeks ago, he did announce the launch of the OVW network, which is four ninety nine. you know, a four ninety nine monthly uh, membership, which is good because um, what, what we're doing is we're going to up, be uploading prior events. We're going to be uploading exclusive video footage uh, backstage footage, stuff like that, where um, the consumer and, you know, the fans that support us, they can go on and watch different aspects of the OVW as as well as our uh, event events. And to me, it, it's a good it's a good tool because I can go back and I can watch different events that I was never part of or events that that uh, occurred prior to me coming to OBW and, you know, just learn different things, you know, brush up on skills, uh, you know, watch different wrestlers and different stuff like that. So it's a great tool, not only for fans, but it's a great tool for our talent and people that's looking to get better and people that's looking to, uh, you know, learn the history of OVW because OVW has been in business, I believe, since 97. So that's a lot of content. That's a lot of content to actually uh, produce on a weekly basis, if you really think about it, man. Yeah, and that's the great thing about OVW, is that it has been around for so long. It's such an established commodity uh, because it's been around for so long. I mean, it's, you know, it's the longest running non-WWE wrestling television program probably ever yeah absolutely and and that that right there is a is an astonishing accolade to have especially for um uh uh, independently you know operated company you know what i mean yeah for sure like we don't have no big time sponsor or some uh, million dollar company sponsor and us so it's uh it's an accolade that you know that is held high you know it's a great accomplishment yeah that it is all right man well hey i got four questions and i ask these of everybody that comes on the show beautiful so the first one hit me with your best shot first one the match or matches that you saw when you were watching wrestling growing up that you can sort of point to and say, that's what I want to do. I want to do what those guys are doing. All right. Sting versus Hulk Hogan. Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Starcade 1997, WCW. The buildup, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that feud, but the buildup for that pay-per-view and that match was very, very, very intriguing and intense. And that's what, that's what captivated me as a young person to want to do, want to be a professional wrestler and to want to perform like those guys. Yes, you are. You are correct. I remember that match actually, to be honest, that feud was probably the feud that got me back into wrestling during that time period. Cause you know, like, like everybody else, I mean, I kind of, I'm, I'm into wrestling for a little while and then I kind of, I'm not into it. And then I, I kind of come back, you know what I mean? But yeah, that one was the one that got me back into wrestling because that's the one that was going on. And the, the way they built that 
Starcade match was it was definitely the best uh, build that WCW ever did, and it was one of the best I think ever in professional wrestling because of how long they kept those two guys apart, yeah. and you finally got them in the ring at Starcade. That's right. It was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. Now the the match we could you know you can talk a lot about the match and, and kind of what happened there, but that's neither here nor there. Okay, so I'm sorry. What you said? Oh, I was saying that. Um, the actual match, you know, you could yeah. you could debate that as far as what happened at the end and all that, but you know, absolutely, the, yeah, the build yeah. was incredible. The build, yeah, definitely, the build was incredible. I'm not sure if the payoff was, but the build was incredible, man. And then it got me. So, <laughs> kudos to yep, that. Got you hooked. All right, man. Second question: Who was your favorite wrestler as a kid? The Rock. Okay, good choice. That was a quick answer. What uh? What was it you liked about The Rock? Well, I really started to dig The Rock uh, when he was in the Nation of Domination. I started to dig him, you know, as he was uh, breaking out of his Rocky Maivia type of molding. He transformed into The Rock, and then you know, he transformed into like the most electrifying man. But just from the stage, um, just from the stages from um, from the Nation to when he became world uh wwf champion and he you know continued to go on the field with steve austin but uh you know just the way that he uh he transformed his character into the charismatic man that we all grown to know that right there um you know that right did uh, you know just inspired me and you know i admired him for all that you know because he was very very entertaining you know, even to this day, he's still entertaining. But, you know, then the, that crucial point of his career was, you know, made him into what he is today. Yeah. And obviously now, I mean, he's a mega star, um, moves the needle yeah. every time he comes back to WWE, whenever he comes back. That's um, right. Definitely, definitely an all time great talent. Yeah. Yep. All right, man. Third question. Hands down. Who is your favorite wrestler to work with? To work with? Uh, jeez. Ah, oh, man. Oh, what a question, brother. I have not. I, I, I don't even have an answer for you. Um, you know, I, I miss my tag partner, Big John. I, I miss him. When me and him was tagging, when me and him was tag team champions, I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed being in matches with him. You know, he, uh, he made it very special, you know, so I really do enjoy tagging and working with him, you know, and beating people up and stuff like that. So I do miss Big John and Big John, if you're listening, you need to bring your fat ass back to OBW. You need to get back in shape. I mean, we need to go for them championships uh, for a second time, man. But yeah, there you go. Big John. I miss working with him. He was a good guy. Good talent. Very good talent. Big, big mother. I don't know if I could curse on him, but he was a big son of a gun, man. Yeah, you can do a little bit, but we're uh, we try to be family friendly, kind of like OVW. So uh, it's it's not like listening to Jim Cornette's program, you know, where he's just going crazy. <laughs> that's a yeah, that's a good that's a good podcast. Yeah. All right, man. The last question: If you could pick uh, any opponent in any venue, what would be your dream match? The opponent and where? Oof. All right, first off, it would be at Madison Square Garden. Okay, and if, just to give you a little bit of time to uh, think about an opponent, if you don't have one offhand. Offhand, here's the ones I can remember from the people I've interviewed before. Dimes okay. said that his would be The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Uh, Callie, I know she said she would wrestle Trish Stratus, but I can't remember where. King's Ransom said The Hardy Boys at WrestleMania in, in a TLC match, and those are the only ones I can remember. So, okay, you said the venue is Madison Square Garden. Yep. The venue would be Madison Square Garden. The event will obviously be the pinnacle for pro wrestling, and that's WrestleMania. You know, uh, and my opponent, you know, um, hmm, my opponent, I mean, if I don't go one-on-one -on -one with the great one, then I, I think it would be a total waste. I would like to go one-on-one -on -one with The Rock, you know, and uh, show him what the Titan is all about. And, you know, I'm pretty sure he'll probably want to sh show me what the Rock is cooking. And uh, I think that would be a good match, actually. 
Yeah, I think you guys would square up pretty good. I mean, you're you're both about the same size. You're both really built, really muscular, um, both really athletic. Yeah, he's just about twenty years older. But <laughs> yeah, I think that's true. I think he is getting up into that's, his mid forties now. Yeah, that's uh, that goes without saying. But yeah, definitely the Rock, Trinidad Titan, Justin Smooth, Madison Square Garden, WrestleMania. Well, that's a pretty that cool sounds one. Epic. Yeah, it does. You're actually the first person to pick the garden. Um, really? Yeah. Where else would you? Where else would somebody want to wrestle for a for a dream match? That's the that's the mecca of meccas, Madison Square Garden. You, you are correct, Jeez. but you did. There, there were two WrestleManias that people picked, and see, you know, okay, I think that's actually something that's that's come up recently because obviously, uh, so we're recording this on. Thursday, so two days from now, actually, the same night as you're doing the Saturday night special, uh, Ring of Honor is going to be running Madison Square Garden, which is That's unheard true. of. Right. It's I, I think it's going to be the first right. non WWE show in Madison Square Garden in like 60 years. That's and right. so, you know, I think for so many modern fans, uh, they, you know, they, they don't associate wrestling with the garden because they've just never seen it there. You know, we were we true? were kind of looking down the list, and it's like the last time they did a televised event from the Garden was 2011. I mean, that's like really hard to believe, but it's, you know, Survivor Series actually when The Rock came back, you know, that was the last televised event at the Garden. Wow. Yeah, I mean, wow, you that. know, because it used to be that they were televising, you know, two events a year or something like that at the Garden, and they were running it every month. Gotcha. Yeah. You are right about that. Definitely. And and plus, I don't know how old the King's Ransom guys are, but I know I know Dimes and Callie and Sam Thompson are definitely in their early twenties. And yeah. I'm I'm gonna say just by virtue of you saying you watched the Sting Hogan thing, you're not in your early twenties. I mean you 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 you're probably not in mid thirties, but you're definitely not early twenties. No, I'm thirty. Okay, so yeah, you would have been right there in that group where the garden was still a thing. Like you would have gotten to actually see a WrestleMania in the garden. But, um, 20. Yeah. Yeah. WrestleMania 20. Yeah, exactly. That is right. Evolution. That's the rock and mankind. Evolution against the rock and rock mankind. And yeah. We, um, uh, my, my co-host and I actually did last week, we did like a best of WrestleMania thing. Like if you had to pick like a dream card, for WrestleMania, like what would you pick? And I actually yeah. put that match on mine, and <laughs> I, I did the math on it. It is, it's unbelievable. Between those five guys, they have won fifty five zero world heavyweight championships in various promotions. Yeah, I mean, that that's just unbelievable. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Well, hey, brother, we're getting uh kind of close to the end here. Do you have anything else that you want to? add into the show that I haven't asked or that we haven't covered? Well, uh, pretty much uh, um, on the OPW Facebook page, we're going to be live this Saturday, uh, Eastern Time Zone. I think it's about 8.30 a.m. is going to be a special historic announcement from OBW, so any fans want to check that out, it's going to be very, very, I believe it's going to be groundbreaking. Um any local fans, we're going to be having our OVW event Saturday night special that same night, April 6th, Davis Arena. Come out, check out some fantastic, phenomenal performances from our talent. I'll be fighting for the OVW Heavyweight Championship against that other guy. And, uh, you know, I just appreciate you uh, having me on the show. Um, and I look forward to uh, chatting with you again, my man. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you coming on. All right, everybody. That was Justin Smooth, the Trinidad Titan, on the show today. Justin, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you, sir. And for all the listeners out there, we appreciate you listening. Talk to you again soon.